But here's what you should know about eating fire. <laughs> if you ever have a, a reflex to uh, inhale like that, it's not good if you're eating fire. Uh, so <laughs> Let's have it. Well, I have to tell you. So, so this is this is this is tough because I do I I I, I either I don't block it out completely. Like when something goes wrong, <laughs> when something goes wrong, I you know you 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 ingest and you go, how can I fix that? But then you it's have like to you move on. Serious therapy. If you block everything out, look, you need to really. <laughs> it's true. Look, I I put up walls. I have walls all around me. Uh, you have to, but you ha and you have to adjust it. But then you have to move on, right? Right. Uh, but but you have to. Take it and go. How can I fix this? I do remember, you know. Actually, I used to be a street performer as a kid, and oh, yeah. yeah, I started as a street performer. I was twelve years old. I was street performing for much of my life, and that's how I, uh, uh, I kind of got into, um, yeah. you know, the prov proving grounds. You know. Yeah. So I do remember I was on the street once, and I was doing a, um, a uh, Bill and Lemon routine. Okay. And uh, that used a grapefruit as well. And I remember, you know, I was I was a I was a kid. I was a teen, you know late teenager, and I thought it was cool to have a, a butterfly knife. Right? Oh so no! I, I would it. use I would use the butterfly knife to cut open the the lemon. Yeah, that's right. So uh, and I was very you know I was look at me I'm a nerd I'm just a nerdy kid with a butterfly. It's ridiculous. So but I and buying the butterfly knife might have been a better story than actually using the butterfly knife. But so, you know, who sells a kid a butterfly knife? First of all, that's who we should be talking to. You should do a podcast with the guy that sold a teenager a butterfly knife. What is wrong with that person? Anyway, that's not, that's not what we're talking about here. So uh, I, I have a butterfly knife and, you know, I, I practice with it. Well, I'm doing the show and, and for whatever reason, the butterfly knife. <laughs> Wait a second. You know, I, you know, I practice with it once. <laughs> once no i knew what i was doing so and there's a clip on the end to keep it closed and i knew and you turn it in your hand and you you flip it and stuff so yeah. anyway so there it is in the, my back pocket but i don't know why but it's sort it's it's sticking up with the v up and 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 the clip is open i don't know why the clip was open so anyway i'm in the heat of the moment it's a great show if i remember the show was great so uh, i do remember that. the show was fantastic and uh, it was amazing, the show. And so I'm, I'm in the moment and I'm gonna reach in and I'm gonna grab, I have my lemon and I'm gonna grab that knife and I reach into my back pocket, which the knife is open. And I grab that, I grab that blade mm, and I pull up and slice my hand, right? And, and, uh, and, and I, I, I don't know if I was in shock or, but I remember, I, 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 but then I pulled the knife out uh, I did the flip, which was really great, kind of amazing, and yeah. and uh, blood, and blood, there's blood my, everywhere, yeah, blood on my head. So I, uh, but the show, the show must go on. So I cut, I cut that, I cut that uh, lemon open, and and I don't know if you poured lemon juice into an open wound. Uh, <laughs> but, I didn't even think about that. Oh my God. This is not fun, but hey. Hey, there was a freaking bill in that gosh darn lemon. So that's all I can say. There was a bill. I may be in, have been in pain. Now, so so I, I the the bill comes out of the lemon, and uh, my hand is on fire. There's blood everywhere. Citrus uh, in your wound. Right. And so now now comes the moment where you think, do I still pass the hat? Because <laughs> That's why I'm here. I need to pay I've for the had, stitches. Yeah, that's why I'm here, people. And I had an audience, so, so I decide to, I go, I put the hat out and I go, I have to go, but here's my hat. And I, a nurse came up and said, would you like a Band-Aid? She gave me a Band-Aid, which is very nice. And then uh, I, and I put the hat down and I left. I, le I, had to, I left for first aid. <laughs> Left the hat there, you know. I actually may have given the hat to a spectator and said, "Would you handle this for me?" And uh, and they did. They, I think they passed the hat for me. And then I came. Did you ever take your hat back and your money? What? I did. I did. I came back, took my money, and left. And then it, you got you got so much money on the hat that you decided to keep it in the act. Right. And so I've been cutting myself every night for years 
It's fantastic, right? People, people say they give up what they give for their art. No, no, let me tell you. A butterfly knife to the same spot on your finger night after night. Now that is dedication. Oh my gosh, that's funny. You know, so my, yeah. I don't know if I've uh, told you this. I did a street performing. I lasted, I wasn't, you know, you said 12 and you did a few years of it, apparently. Yeah. I did about um, many, many, 12 many. minutes. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was 16. Yeah, about, I think 16 years old. And I went to Pier 39 because I knew they were in San Francisco, sure. right? There's, there's sure. performers all the time. So I went to Pier 39 and I'm like, all right. And I looked around and I kind of set up in front of one of the shops and there's like people walking by and I had like a music thing and I put music and I did an act and I just started performing and I put a hat out. Uh, I made some money, not a lot, but made my first time. I was like, cool, all right. So right after that, I went to Joe Pond's uh, magic shop who was on the podcast yeah. yesterday. And Oh, great. Yeah, and so I went over to Joe Pond. I was like, hey, man, I'm so excited. I just did shows on Pier 39. And he's like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. How, how did you get that? How did you do it? I go, oh no, man, I, you know, I performed over here and I did the show and I made money. He goes, but how did you get that gig? I go, what do you mean? He goes, how did you get, did you audition? How'd you get the showcase or what? what? And I go, I just went out there and I just did a show. He goes, you can't do that. <laughs> That's illegal. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's private property. It, yeah. you, know, you have to go somewhere else. You can't just go on Pier 39. And I was like, oh, and he started oh. laughing. He goes, yeah, don't, probably don't do that again. Cause I'll ask you, cause you're a kid. They'll probably just ask you to leave. You're not gonna get in trouble or anything. But like, I was like, I don't want to do it anymore. Took my everything out of the wind out of my sails. So that's the, that was the extent of my street performing career. Hey, come on. Street performing should be just that. The idea that you have to get a permit to street perform. You're, the idea is you're out on the street yeah. performing. On the street performing, yeah. right? That is the idea uh, of street performing. But, but you, all these places, you need a permit. You're exactly yeah. right. I started, here's the deal. I was, I was 12 years old. Uh, and my mother, my mother in St. Louis, Missouri, my mother, found an ad for this place in St. Louis that had street performers. And, and it was a very important place for me growing up to kind of, uh, to get my, you know, to grind my teeth on all this. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, she found this ad. She said, you should audition to be a street performer there. And I go, mom, you're crazy. So I did. And I was, I was street performing and in other places too, but that was really my, was my main it. spot in St. Louis for, you know, all through college. Uh, wow. and yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did it for a long, long time, and it's amazing. Uh, it was it was a huge uh, training ground for me because you know you get to learn how to. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So you get to you know, and that's also where I was eating fire. I got to learn how to eat fire, uh, and and I did a lot of fire eating. I have to send you a picture. Actually, it's pretty cool. Uh, in fact, after this, after this butterfly knife story, I don't know if I really think that you should be eating fire. Oh, well, I can, I can assure you, I should not be eating fire. So, uh, <laughs> Alex, Alex, I'm going to send you a text message right now okay. with a picture of, with a picture. And, and I want to tell you about, it's not even a big story, but that moment. So I just sent you a picture of a fire eating shot. Do you see it? Yeah. And yeah. If you can't, uh, as you guys can see it. Yeah. And so that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good night. Look at that fire just hanging out of my mouth there. Yeah. Right? It looks like you have flaming I mean, tongues. Yeah. It's all exploding from my mouth. Well, I have to tell you, here's the thing. Not only did I burn the heck out of my mouth that night, but look, <laughs> I mean, I, I came away with blisters like you wouldn't believe on the inside of my mouth. But look at that photo. That photo is unbelievable. That's all and you need. <laughs> that's all you need. I was like, I got the photo. So, so uh, <laughs> that's really all you need. Uh, I don't need fire anymore. It's too. Sound like an Instagram but, model. Just, yeah. <laughs> just I got the photo. But here's what you should know about eating fire. <laughs> if you ever have a, a reflex to uh, inhale like that, it's not good if you're <laughs> eating fire. Uh, so. <laughs> Boy, that that's fire, not it, good no it went down my it went down into my lungs holy smokes that was a that was a heck of a night but i got the photo and that's what's really important that's all that matters so that's all that matters that, you that's put that in your promo it's like one of those people that have like a huge cv and it has like all these special skills fire eating glass walking you know juggling <laughs> this unicide and it's like you do all this stuff what's wrong with you what is wrong with you people uh I do have another story for you, actually. All right, all right. Uh, I was 
I'm very fortunate to work on uh, the production of the movie, The Incredible Burt Wonderstone. And, uh, right, yeah. right, right. And that Jeffrey is- and Steve Carell, all about magic. That's right, that's right. And that's all because, uh, I don't want to call him out, but it's all because of Jim Steinmeier. The, uh, oh. the only reason that I was on that show uh, was that Jim recommended me for the, for the, for the run of the production. Jim was uh, the consultant on the show in pre-production and building all, all the, everything and, and, uh, and worked and I worked with him along the production to uh, bounce ideas off and all of this. And so, and in fact, I'll just, get, if I can, just give yeah. a shout out. Uh, all the things in my uh, adult life as a magician that have been most interesting in my life are a direct result of Jim Steinmeier. So Me too. yeah, I just, I just, I, I just have to say, it's absolutely true. When I look back at all the things that I have real, uh, memories of and and have really given me the, the, the greatest joy as a magician. Uh, it's all because of Jim Steinmeier. You know, what's funny is out of the magicians, you, Kevin Spencer, Robert, me, obviously, I'm talking, uh, Jay, Joe, every magician who has been on this podcast somehow, some way mentions Jim. I mean, that shows you how, how yeah. incredibly important he is in the world of magic. Pretty incredible. Incredibly important, but also how incredibly generous and gracious. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah. I would say, yeah. I, yeah. The fact, the, fact that he, the fact that any of these opportunities came up. Yeah. Are, 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 it, it speaks ex solely you know, to how generous he is to, to allowing those opportunities to exist and, and allowing people to take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah. And he never yeah. wants any credit. You always go, Hey, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So I'm, I'm really grateful for all that. Absolutely. Uh, so, but I was lucky in the movie. to be on that movie and, and I got to work with, uh, with Steve Carell and, and, uh, Alan Arkin and Olivia Wilde and, and, uh, Steve Buscemi. Um, oh yeah. I forgot he was in that. Yeah, I know. You know, actually, I'm not to cut you off, but I was doing a week at the Magic Castle right before production of that film. And Steve Carell was in the audience in the, in the palace right on the aisle. And, you know, well, I mean, it's normal. You see celebrities frequent the Magic Castle nightly. I mean, that's not a uncommon thing. But I remember I did the show and I'm doing this routine that was a, was a um, you know, had humor in it and it was was funny and i remember just thinking looking out in the audience and seeing steve carell laugh and it's like here's an actor that is just so known for his comedy and he's yeah. laughing at the routine that i'm doing and afterwards um i sang hi to someone else and he was there and i shook his hand and he was just like oh my gosh i loved it it was so great thank you i go oh thank you so much and what i didn't realize is he was going as to kind of get into the magic world yeah. right before you guys started production. And then afterwards, yeah. it was like, oh, he's doing this thing. I go, oh, that's why he was there. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I, okay, so he, was, he was amazing. He was so, yeah. so nice and so wanting to do it, you know? He, yeah. and, and even though I was his hands in a, much of the movie, right. uh, he, he did do some of it, you know? And he really worked at it and we, and he wanted to, uh, get his hands working. He wanted to learn it. He wanted to learn the nuance. He was amazing and hilarious, by the yeah. way, and hilarious. Uh, and by the way, okay, here's a quick story uh, from the movie about Alan Arkin. Okay. Uh, this is, this is, what a lesson this is. So Alan Arkin is playing the older magician, right? And right. there's a scene when he's on set, on stage, filming uh, a video for a, 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 like a video, like a release, like, you know, for a magic set. Okay. Uh, or it was a show or something like this. So he has to produce an egg and he's on stage and we're at, I think it might've been the Orpheum Theater down, downtown. And his, he, he does this flourish with the ha his hand, this really insane flourish and then stops and there would be an egg there, right? Which they'll put in and post. <laughs> and I'm in the audience very close to the stage. The director is about a row in front of me and I'm a row behind him. And, and I say, can I interrupt for a second? Alan, no magician would ever make that sort of flourish to produce an egg. <laughs> and, and Alan says to me, yeah, but my way is funnier. <laughs> and I go, oh, yeah, it is. And then you see the movie and you go, okay, yeah, it is. And it works. And what a lesson that was to me. Oh, um, man, it is. 
you know, what a lesson. You know, he, he was exactly right. He goes, yeah, but this is what makes it better. Yeah. And, uh, and you go, okay, well, that, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Proceed. <laughs> yeah, proceed. But there is, okay, so I do have, I, I, there's other things like that. Okay, so there's another, I don't know why, now these stories are coming up. For one reason, for, for one reason. But there was, there was a scene where we were, uh, it was between Olivia Wilde and Steve Carey. Steve, I'm sorry, Steve Carell. Steve Carey and Steve Carell, I've uh, conflated them. Steve Carell and Olivia Wilde. And, uh, and Olivia, they're standing close to each other and Olivia was going to uh, levitate a bill, right? Uh, do some levitation in between her hands. And so I'm setting all that up for them. And, and we spent a long time doing it. And uh, I don't know who your audience is, so I won't divulge the secret to it. But I will say that, um, that uh, the night before and the nights before, I spent a tremendous amount of time preparing for that, <laughs> oh, I... uh, that trick. Right, because you have to get ready, and then there you have to be ready in case you have to do it again yeah, and again yeah, and yeah, again yeah, and yeah. again. And you have to, and if you're coming on as a consultant, you have to have everything ready so that you don't stop production. Right. So, so I'm working really hard to uh, get everything ready. Spend a long time. We get on set and we're doing it and we're setting it up and we're she's and I'm teaching her how to float this bill and she's going to float this. It's going to levitate between her hands and and we spend a long time on it and then. Uh, in the final shot, uh, it's a butterfly that flies out of her hands. And you go, what? What happened there? You know, and they they replace the the bill with the butterfly, and and all that work. We thought, that why did we do this at all? We didn't need to do it at all. That's exactly right. So that's uh, there that's it is. I, I I've I've been there. I know. I did. Um, I see. This the thing is that when you start talking about that um, that experience doing that uh, you know working with those actors i forgot that years ago i worked on it was a i guess sequel to the tv series 24 and i even forgot what oh, it's yeah. called it was, it was yeah, right Island, and there was a i forgot what this tv show was called i remember and yeah my friend from like elementary school she was wardrobe on it and she just was like, hey, they're doing this thing about magic. I told them about you because they needed help with something. Can you come in and do this? I can't even remember what the TV show's called, but somebody will listen and know what I'm talking about. But it was like after 24 and it was with Kiefer Sutherland and whatever. And I had to teach this kid how to do magic. And oh. I'm like, oh my gosh, how are we gonna do this? This is the prop. And then, oh, here's the best part. They said, oh, we want you to teach him how to do this trick. And I said, okay, what do you want to do? They go, this is what we want to happen. And it was like, it was kind of like a, a crystal tube and you produce things out of it. So I get to set and I go, do you need anything? They go, no, 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 we have the props. I get there and they literally just hand me a clear tube and a, and a opaque tube. Go, and I go, well, what is this? They go, oh, that's what we want to do the trick with. And I go, well, where did you even get this? They go, oh, we had the prop guy make it. Because they, for somehow, they don't realize that, you know, magic, there is a way to do it. Yeah. They're just like, well, don't you just snap your fingers? Right, right, right. right. And things appear. Yeah. Things appear. Right? Yeah. And magician. I'm like, yeah. uh, this isn't even a trick. Like, this isn't even, <laughs> I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? So then they go, okay, so the director's going to come in, you know, at this afternoon, can you show them the thing? And I'm like, uh, what do you mean? And like, I'm trying to tell my friend, Sarah, I was like, Sarah, like, this isn't even, and she goes, oh, I don't know. I go, like, they wanted me to teach them and I'm happy to teach them, but we need other props. Like, you can't, this doesn't, this is not even, so I'm there and I go, okay. And I, I went to the prop guy, I said, look, this is what you have to do. And I, I remember having them do something. And I think, you know, I turned it into, you know, a different a prop sort of. And so anyhow, as I'm doing it, I have the kid trying to figure out, I go, okay, do this, do this, do this. And the kid kind of doesn't know, he's like, you know, 12 and he's kind of not really paying attention. So they go, oh, we're gonna have the director come in at, you know, at, three to see how it goes and i'm like great and i just said look i'll do it for the director 
and I told the kid and I told the other person, the assistant coming in telling me like, oh, the director's coming, the director's coming. I said, I'm going to do it for the director. They go, but we want to see the kid do it. I go, he's not ready. Let me do it. And then that's what the director can see. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope this even works. And so I end up doing this trick and it's like, in my mind, I'm like, this is so embarrassing. This is, <laughs> this is so awful. And I'm sitting here going to the director, okay, are you ready? And I do the thing and the director kind of goes, yeah, it's great, perfect. All right, let's go film it. Yep. And like walks out. He was there for like a total of like seven seconds. And I'm uh -huh. like, oh gosh. Uh -huh. Needless to say, uh, they kind of cut it all. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I was on the set and I got paid. Right. Whatever. You know, now here's I have the thing. story on my podcast. That's why it's, I it's true. But here's the thing. That's what we do, you know, especially as consultants. We we work for people don't realize how hard we work to get a, a moment on screen. Just a moment. You know, and it's it's true. And you have to sometimes you have to give it to an actor who's not a magician and they have to muddle their way through it or they have, you know, but but it's it, and sometimes they'll come in that morning and go, OK, what are we doing? Yep. Uh, show me. Show me the trick. Right. You know, and you and you're thinking I have worked for years to perfect these tricks right. years. And, well, you know, they cut, you know, they come in in the morning and they have to do it. Well, here, you know, after working with actors, pop stars, dancers singers you know circus performers like i mean you know the gambit of of entertainers i always found that people would say to me they are most nervous when they're trying to do magic and the reason why is because there's a secret and if you give it away the whole thing's meaningless and right. so the pressure that happens i remember i had there was a collegiate athlete that assisted me for a while and she was doing a show and it was like a couple things like an illusion or two and she did a great job but she was a performer from collegiate athlete vegas on the strip in la rev um like cirque du soleil type shows and um i said hey can you come in and fill in and she did and she just before the show i was like yeah all right she's like i'm i'm just so nervous i'm like what do you mean you've been in like huge shows this was like a little show that i was had you know off you know wherever and she just was like, I just don't want to, and I'm like thinking, and whenever I talk to any of these other performers, it's always that I'm so nervous. Yeah. And that brings yeah. me to, and I just remember this, you were the host and you worked on Celebra Cadabra. I did. Yeah. Now that was basically a bunch of different celebrities. It was a competition that then had to learn magic tricks and go perform them. Right. 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 And, and if I can, there's, there's, um, uh, there's, Beside, I mean, I had to write. Here's something. <laughs> uh, here's something. I will say this. Uh, the reason that opportunity was pre presented to me to even have the job as host is because two people specifically recommended me, mm -hmm. David Regal and Jim Steinmeier. <laughs> uh, all right. Please see point A. So, yeah. So, yeah um, uh, so I'm so grateful to the two of them for making that. Can I just tell you how that went down to become to be the host of that show? Yeah, go. Can I just, because this this speaks to the ridiculousness of the situation of me as well. So during that show, that was a show where celebrities were working with uh, magicians as coaches, and they and it was like, like Dancing with the Stars of Magic, and uh, they were interviewing all magicians all around the world to be coaches, and so. I was coming off of a, a kind of a, uh, a stream of hosting television shows. That's, I had a, right. a, a life as a television host for a while. And uh, so they called me in and I went in to talk to them. Right. And I remember going in and saying, this is all nice, but, you know, I really should be the host of this show. Which I guess you don't normally do. You don't do that normally. I said, and 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 you could see them go. I yeah, think. Okay, okay. Yeah. Could you cl just close the door on the way out? Just close <laughs> the door, please. Right. So I left feeling pretty good about myself. Like you know what? <laughs> what I mean because wh why not? Right. Why wh why wouldn't I? Right. Why not? Why not? You know it's audacious, but why not? So. Uh, I, I walked out and, and that was it. I hadn't heard from them. They went off and they shot their pilot. And 
and then I'm shooting a short film out here in LA. And I remember getting a phone call during that shoot. And it was, uh, it was uh, Chris Martin. I, I think it was Chris Martin, one uh, of the EPs on the show. And he said, hey, are you still interested in hosting Celebra Cadabra? And I said, yeah, I am. Because I think what happened after that, if I remember correctly, I'm sorry if I get this wrong, but they had, uh, they had shot a pilot, they had a host, and the host was not a magician. Right. And you know, so it just didn't, I don't think it was a fit. And I think they reached out to some people, David Regal and Jim Steinmeier, asking for suggestions. And they both said, you should talk to Jonathan. And so at that point, it was sort of everything kind of met and, uh, and they made the, the phone guy call. goes, gets off the phone with David and Jim and goes, you know that guy we didn't want? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah, I mean, I, so I'm but really, you know really what? grateful I, to that. I, I think the same thing all the time, you know, it's like, you know, when people refer you and, and oh, well, side note, it's like also taking the initiative to say, hey, look, this is how it is. Like my, my audition is similar when I auditioned for Disney tour. I was 20 years old and I had, uh, I flew to Vegas for the audition for the choreographer. And we met and at the time I was doing my silent manipulation and dove act that I was winning the wise contest act. Right. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, everything that I did was silent to music or audience interactive. I didn't really have any stand up pieces that I could perform and did no interaction. It was always like audience participation or silent. So of course they don't want to see just that for an audition, especially for something that is more production plays lines, scripts and things like that so i get to the thing and he goes okay well uh why don't you just show us some magic and i go oh do you have a, you know a cd player or music i have some music and he goes oh are you what are you gonna do i go oh, i'm gonna put the music on i'm gonna do magic and he's like oh i would rather you know not use the music so i can hear you i go oh like just like me talking and doing magic because yeah i kind of want to see your personality and i want to see you know you talk and engage and and you know and i said can you help me with a trick and he's like no i kind of just want to watch and observe you on stage that's what i want to do and i in my head i remember at 20 years old i remember thinking well i'm just gonna be honest and i said to him in the audition i said that's not what i do <laughs> like that's right if, well if, there it is yep i go you know what like in an audition you're asking and i just go that's not what i do and he looked at me like okay i said uh -huh. i do magic silent to music or i use audience participation so if you can't help me with a trick why you know and i can't use that and he goes okay oh, well do something and i said yeah do you have a cd player <laughs> he goes, uh -huh. put this on <laughs> so uh -huh. so i put it on i did the routine and um you know, long story short, I got I got the role. But it's just one of is this is this when you got is this for for the the ringmaster or before that? No, this was before that. Before that, I got 20, it. Okay. I was twenty, and I I I, I auditioned, and um, about two weeks later, they asked. Um, wow. If I could join the tour. Good for you. And when you joined the tour, were you doing a silent act? No, I was. Oh man, I mean, it was okay. Here's a story. Um, I got the, I got cast in the show and I flew to Columbia, South Carolina, where we were rehearsing and we were there for about, I think four or five weeks or so, five or six weeks, somewhere around there to build the whole show. I had never been, I wasn't a theater kid really. I mean, I wasn't like, I didn't do plays. I didn't do, you know, things like that. Like I may have been in an incidental play and but it was not like I was a theater kid, right? So I had never done blocking, you know? I never had like a script. Yeah. I didn't know what blocking was. I didn't know when somebody goes, oh, we're gonna do blocking today. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what that means. And so I was really kind of, and Jim Steinmeier was there. And um, wow. it was the first time that I really worked with him. Wow. And so anyhow, about two weeks in, they, I was going through this and I just didn't, 
you know, there's characters and I have a script and I have to learn my entrances and I, some of it, I'm not even doing the magic and the other characters are doing magic and then I will be a part of an illusion. But at the time I was just like manipulation and I'm like, this is not. And I remember saying to Jim, 20 years old, saying to Jim, I go, I hate prop magic. You know? oh. And Jim said, looked at me, he goes, you'll learn to love it. <laughs> and so, but you know, the props aren't the magic, it's you are in the presentation, of course, that yeah. I learned later. But I went to the director, uh, Jerry Billick, who was just this crazy genius. He was just such a fun, sweet man, great, great guy. Anyways, I about two weeks in, I went to Jerry and I said, yeah, you know, I don't think I'm right for this. I think I should go. And Jerry, being a good director, first of all, is like, we're not going to recast yes. this, you know? That's right, right. That's how he's thinking. But two, made me feel comfortable enough to stay. But I, I did. I requested to leave. I said, I don't, wow. I don't think I'm right for this. I think you need to find someone else. Um, this is not for me. And so what ends up happening is he kind of talked to me. He goes, wow. don't worry. He goes, I will make sure that you know, you're doing exactly what's right. We're all learning. We're doing that. And, he, I, and I was also the youngest one on tour. So I was, the, I was the youngest. And so I just was in, not in a good element for me at the time. I was uncomfortable, which was the best thing for me, right? Yeah, right, right. Then right. Um, I did the first year. And after the second year, um, after we did a year one tour, uh, I had a year two option and, and Jerry, and I didn't want to do it. I said, oh, I did one year, I'm done. And Jerry said, no, you know, we talked with Kenneth Feld and Kenneth has some plans for you. And he, in his mind, wow. ringling. And he goes, Kenneth has plans wow. for you. So just do the second year because there's light at the end of the tunnel. Kenneth wanted me to tell you that. Just, just hold out. And so I verbally said to Jerry Billick on the phone, I said, I will do year two based off of your word that something's after this. And then wow, good for you. A, couple, good for you. a few months later, um, Nicole and Kenneth approached me to do Ringling Brothers. Wow. Well, I have to tell you what a great story that is. Uh, yeah. Because so they saw in you now what we have had the opportunity to see in you for all that this time since then. Uh, they saw that in you and they knew it. Yeah. And uh, and they believed in you and they pushed this. What a great story because you your career really did take off and you You've gone yeah. on to prove that you can do kind of anything, yeah. uh, which, which is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so that's when it, but that's when it all started. It seems that's, that's a, what a great story. Great story. What that is, I think, also is that being honest about it, right? Yeah. Is, yeah. Is never. I realized I didn't want to promise something that I couldn't deliver, and then it sure. catches me and bites me in the butt. So this guy in this audition says, "All right, I want you to do this." Instead of going, "Oh well, I better do something." And what if I didn't? I sucked at it. And they go, "Ah, this guy's not very good. He's not right for this." Instead, I was like confident and saying, "That's not what I do." In an well, but, audition. So. But Alex, but Alex, yes, I, I get you that you you were confident enough to say to know what your limitations are. But the reality is, those were not your limitations. And uh, if you didn't have somebody saying to you you can do this yeah because you you can do you could do this at that time you had the ability to do it you just didn't believe in yourself enough to yeah. do it and now if you look at what you're doing with 35 and 35 you know now when you, if you woke up in the morning going i can't do this of course you're not doing that now anything that is put in front of you alex ramon says i can do this yeah That's you know and it, you know and and we all need people in our life at times yeah. to give us that permission and to give us that that support to say, uh, I can do this, you know, and, and, you know, I have a philosophy of you say yes, mm -hmm. right. And say yes. If somebody says, can you do this? You say, yes, I can. Even if you feel like you can't, and you're putting yourself in the most uncomfortable position. And just like you're saying, that is what the moment that we need to be in. uncomfortable pushes us to well, get it done. To grow and to be better and whatever field you are, right? Like it's interesting that, in the times in your life where you felt that you grew the most, that you actually developed into a better person the most, have been really traumatic things sometimes. Yeah. Like you lose a job, coronavirus, right? Like right. something right. else pushes you to go, I'm uncomfortable, so I have to attack head on whatever right. the barrier is. And the better that you go after it, you can knock that barrier down and come out on the other side of it even stronger and a better person. Right. I think that that's a lesson um, 
you know, for, for everyone. And, um, and that's pretty cool. And that's exciting. And I mean, it happens with you and your career when you're having like, even like celebrity cadaver and these hosting things happen and you're like, yeah, I want to do this. I'm going to do this. And, and you're telling them I should be the host just, just straight up. This is what I should do. And, um, and it served you well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you have, you have to do it. I mean, you have to do it. And I guess that's what this podcast is really about, isn't it? It, it would have been amazing. At any one of these stories along the way, we could stop ourselves. Yeah. Or we could say, let's pick ourselves up and let's keep going. Yeah. You know, and, 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 uh, and let's do the next thing and, and let's, let's get it done. And uh, yeah, that's exactly right. By the way, speaking of, of screwing up on Celebra Cadabra, uh, <laughs> I believe I believe there is a I believe there's a video out there on on the YouTube or someplace. I think there is. It might actually be on my website, to be honest. Uh, Celebrity Cadaver bloopers with Jonathan Levitt. And if you want to see Jonathan Levitt not nailing his hosting uh, uh, responsibilities, you can watch this, this this blooper reel that they put together. Okay. It's pretty, it's pretty darn funny. So wait, wait uh, is it on your site or not? It actually might. It actually let me. Let me check real, check real fast. Actually, check real fast. It, it might have, I might have put it up on the media section on, of you, my site. Celebra Cadabra, okay. Celebra Cadabra bloopers. bloopers. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's, it's me bloopering the heck out of things. Um, <laughs> it, it is, I saw my website actually. It, it's on the, in the media section of, of, uh, of my side. site, Jonathan Levitt. All right. Yeah, All right. Yeah. That's awesome. pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Cool. Jonathan, thanks for the time, man. Have a great day. We'll chat soon, huh? Hey, uh, thanks, for, thanks for having me do this with you. And I, I, miss, I, miss the I miss the heck out of you, buddy. I know. I miss you. I'll see you soon. Um, and if not, we'll do a, a, a part two. Yeah. And if nothing else, let's have a coffee. Yeah. Over Zoom. Over oh, Zoom. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Jonathan. I appreciate it, man. Have a great day. See you, buddy.